Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Howard, for filling in for uh, Mr. Lamar. And uh, on such short notice, very short very notice. well. <laughs> <laughs> we are here for the uh, January 2023 meeting at the library, and uh, we're going to turn it over to Ms. Carolyn. And then, okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Stradiron. Appreciate it. Um, we're excited for this new year. We've got lots of great plans and a lot of that will come out in today's report. Um, one of the highlights of our, our program have been our friends of the public library of the Newburgh Library, which is our um, nonprofit 501c3 arm, fundraising arm, and for many years have, have supplemented our programming through book sales and have now come up with ingenious ways to hold book sales. And so I, I've invited them here to give a brief presentation about what, they're, what they've been up to and how successful they've been. So we have Donna Rickey and Suzanne Dawes. Take it away. Thank you. Take it away. <laughs> Hi, I'm Suzanne Dawes. And um, I was mentioning earlier that I'm only ever been in this room when it's been really, really heavy stuff. <laughs> it's nice to be. I, I taught kindergarten in the district for many, many years. So it's nice to be here in a, a less formal situation. <laughs> the Friends of the Newburgh Library um, were founded in the mid 70s when this building was open and we moved down the street from, I think it was two or something, Grand Street. Uh, for the last 50 years, we have supported programs of the library through advocacy and also with our financial support. We're often able to support things that are with beyond the library budget, you know, last minute things, things that pop up during the year and, and that kind of thing. Uh, some of the things that we provide ongoing support for our refreshments for programs. I mean, a nice a nice thing that the library cannot put in the budget. Incentives for, re for reading programs. The summer reading programs are able to give incentives, t-shirts and, and even books, mm -hmm. books, things like that to children and teens and also adults. The flowers for the plaza and the beautiful artwork on the plaza is something that we were able to support through, through our funds. Um, we, you know, marketing things for outreach programs. For the last 15 years, we've awarded a scholarship to a graduating NFA senior in honor of Regina Angelo. And we established that the first time Regina retired. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, um, we uh, try, we make every effort to make that award to a student who has been involved in the library as a page or a volunteer or in that kind of way. We also support many of the community events that are sponsored by the library and other agencies. For instance, this past year we sponsored, we helped sponsor Family Reading Day with the, with the Board of Ed. We helped with the African American Cultural Celebration at the beginning of the school year, the Day of the Dead celebration that was held around Halloween. And we've also, because we are a 501c3 organization, we can apply for grants. And sometimes we're even able to help a, an artist in the community who would like to apply for a grant but has no possible way of doing it without a CO, uh, 501c3 uh, certificate, but we can help them apply for a grant and then they can do a program for us. It's kind of a reciprocal thing. And we were joking a little bit earlier about our annual book sale. I mean, some of you probably remember the annual book sale <laughs> okay. where we would transport 8,000 books from the first floor up to the auditorium and then have to return everything the next day or it was back-breaking work, and we're all getting old. <laughs> we would not, never have been able to do it without the help of the NFA ROTC and their, their great advisors. During the pandemic, of course, we, did, we were two years without a book sale. And during that time, Mary Lou suggested that we use the book, book storage slash junk storage room <laughs> on the first floor as a shop. 
And when she first mentioned it, I thought, well, in my to myself, I thought, well, that's never going to happen. <laughs> that's really, first of all, where is all of this stuff going to go? It's just too big an undertaking. Well, thanks to the vision of Donna and a really hardworking team, we have established a wonderful bookshop downstairs on the first floor. If you have not seen it, you need to go look at it. Please. Please. <laughs> it's a mini library. It's a mini, it's a mini library. It's wonderful. We're open. Currently, we're open one Saturday a month. And I'll skip the backdoor books for right now because Donna will go into it more in a little bit. Um, and, and just tell you, do you want to talk about Jenna? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Donna can talk about that as well. And I just, the last note that I have is I hope you've noticed the Friends Cafe in the lobby yes. uh, that's reopened after after the uh, pandemic. And we're fortunate to be able to have that space and use it as a warm and inviting space. And the, the baked goods are baked by one of our library staff mm -hmm. people. Okay. Wonderful. Has her own business. Has her own business that we're able to. Yeah. Um, young. So I'm going to do a new star project there too, which is neat. Wonderful. Wait, Wonderful. So we, you buy a cup of co you buy yeah. two cups of yeah. coffee. You put a cup of coffee on a piece of paper, put it on the bulletin board, and then someone who doesn't have the funds for a cup of coffee or soup or a bagel can pull that note down. It's already been paid for and turn it in. So New York City does that, a pizza place or something there's like there's that. There's a number yeah. of places. Yeah. 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 Locally, can. it's run by a group called the Impact Project. Mm -hmm. And and so we're we're one of the branches. That's oh, great. Cool. That's that's cool. Cool. Okay, so Donna will talk a little bit about backdoor books. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Donna Ricky, as uh, Mary Lou had uh, in, uh, said, um, since we opened backdoor books in July of 2021, <clears throat> Excuse me. We've created a place where book lovers can come and browse our ever growing shelves. Oh my God, I need more shelves. <laughs> we have taken in monetary donations of well over $9,000 since we started, and actual book donations from the community at large of well over 5,000 books that have come in that we've gone through, sorted shelved um and went from there we have all the genres like you would have in the main library we have them downstairs and it's ever growing and uh our children's section has now become the proud owners of the rug the multicolor rug that was at the town branch so it has the the vision that i thought of when okay how are we going to make a bookshop because i'm an avid reader um it's just added to the location uh, of great. that uh march of this year um our Mrs. Jump from Horizon School was uh, named Librarian of the Year um, with Jenna Bush Hager and the Today Show. And part of that, her getting uh, uh, nominated, was that the friends of the library were able to receive well over and 2,800 books that end up being. They originally said 2,000. Brand new books from her virtual book club was donated to us. Beautiful hard covers, brand new. Hard Every covers, yeah. hard covers, and we still have some left. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was totally overwhelmed. I thought, okay, this was fit on a few shelves. No, it filled up the whole back. I, we just got boxes and over 100 boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you said there was a hallway full of boxes, um, <laughs> it's just been, and these books, because of the kindness and the donation, these books have gone out to many places within the community, St. Harbors, Newburgh Ministry, Project Life, Project Hope, uh, the senior housing programs, uh, food pantries, um, again, to the different or different days, family reading day, uh, Newburgh Illuminated, mm -hmm. anywhere we can make a presence and the library had a presence, those books were there to give out to the community for free. Um, it just, and we're still doing it. We're still, the, the nursing homes, Office for the Aging in Orange County, these books are going out there. In addition to the Jenna books, we're giving them other books too that we have, uh, when we did the Orange County um, Senior Fitness Program, the ladies that were there and gentlemen wanted the books, but they were more interested in James Patterson and all that. So as we get those books and as donations, I pack them back up again and they go out to these people. They're handed out with their mail delivery. 
uh, Meals on Wheels, they're mail delivery for Office of Aging. So we are getting out into the community. Our names are out there. Um, even um, Patty Sussman's Tuesdays at two, mm -hmm. she's gotten quite a few of the book selections also to, to read and everything. Um, we support, as Suzanne says, many of the programs, uh, the new library of things, which was at Mensa, you know, right. our donations, <laughs> prizes for the summer reading program. And again, if Mary Lou didn't say, okay, you can have this room, okay, you know, but uh, please, whenever you're in the building, please stop mm -hmm. in. Even if we're not there, the room is open. So you yes. can browse mm -hmm. and uh, go through it. Um, the group of people that make up the Friends of the Newburgh Library are dedicated to promoting literacy mm -hmm. and getting books into the hands of our diverse community. And nothing will stop us. Even I had books in my car and I was at Adams and this little boy was in the car in front of me and everything and they were coming out. And uh, I said to the mom, I said, does he like to read? Oh yes, he loves to read. I go, one minute. <laughs> and I went to my car, I got green eggs and ham because I always carry books. I, you never know when you're gonna find a kid. And I said, here, you know, she says, you're giving him a book? You don't even know us. Does it matter? I'm putting a book in a child's hand, and that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. And that's back to our books and the Friends of the Library. That's us. That's us. That's us. And the one thing that, that we could use help with is um, word of mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our best publicity is word of mouth. And, you know, we, we have limited ways to, to advertise ourselves. We can yeah. have flyers at Adams. We can have flyers downstairs in the lobby. We post some things on social media. Mm -hmm. But the more people that know about us, the yeah. better we are. Come to our we, our next sale is the twentieth. Uh, next, not this Saturday. Next, next Saturday. Saturday, the twenty first, mm -hmm. if I'm Something not mistaken. Like um, mm -hmm. We're open from ten to two. Okay. Um, I'll be putting my sign, my lawn signs, out on Sunday to, to tell the the community we'll be open. Mm -hmm. And um, can we show the picture of the, or did it not come? Did through? it not did come, come, didn't come through? through? Pass that around. But also, the word has somehow gotten out to even anonymous donors about how wonderful the friends are because. Uh, we received a check the other day in the mail for ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars for the friends of the library, and it was from a fund um, that was uh, there. There were two donors listed on the letter. It was totally unsolicited, and it was for a general use, general purpose use. And um, Suzanne's just you know trying to find out who exactly. Um, donated this, but she thinks there might be some association with when she was a kindergarten teacher. The, the <laughs> name on the donation, one of the names was a child I had in kindergarten 25 years ago. It's so, yeah, and that company <laughs> is right down here on, on Water right. Street. Yeah, right. And they're involved with fitness and, and wellness and nutrition. So we're thinking in our minds, we would like to develop a program for the community. Yeah, here at the library. Here at the library that focuses on health and nutrition. So yeah. we're doing a lot. Yeah. We're doing yeah. a lot. Yeah. It is so well loved and noticed and thank you from all of the staff, especially thank because allowing everybody us. recognizes what you do. And yeah. um, we are so appreciative because it comes back to supplement the programs that we operate and the services that we use and, and we offer to the community. And we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. we appreciate the opportunity to talk about ourselves. And thank <laughs> yes. you for your support because we need all the support we can get. Yes. You got it. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. So we going down on the um, agenda, we do not have minutes for December 8th as we did, we did not have a quorum. So we'll, um, if it's okay, we'll just go right to the yes. um, director's report. Um, okay, just general overview, if I can start there. Um, we are uh, launching as of uh, January um, across the state. Uh, a new law had gone into effect uh, middle of last year. Um, requiring uh, all board members of libraries throughout the state to um, to take uh, two hours of mandatory library training. And so there is a link right there um, that you can kind of pick and choose, you know, the trainings that you would be interested yeah. in. Are you on the December or just which one are we open in December or the January? We didn't one? open the, we're in January. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. Just that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a link there that you can access and and it has a host of of different topics but i encourage you to take part in that at some point i'm going to have to report something i don't know i don't have all, all the details just yet but um yes, oh i'm sorry 
this new uh, directive, mm -hmm. is it for newly elected board no, members? For all board members. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I heard different. So there's going to be something that's going to be placed in the weekly this week. We wanted to speak about it here first. And we've started to get directives. They've changed it. It's a library trustee training. So we wanted to discuss it here um, and give you the actual legislature um, from the board trustee, uh, from the state trustees around libraries so that you guys can all see it. It's two hours of mandatory. And there's a plethora of sections. I think Mary Lou has the, this link will show you different ones. Mm -hmm. Um, and there may need to be a discussion about how you want to approach that, whether it's individually or what have you. So what I heard is not correct. No, it's it, you have to have two hours of mandatory training. And I'll All members you, of the board. Yes, mm -hmm. any li and anyone that serves as a library trustee. Mm -hmm. Yes, I we all we all serve. I mean, the the, the way that our we are set up. Um, our Board of Education acts as our library trustees, so everyone has to do two hours. So we'll, we're going to, I'll provide that in the weekly this the week. legislation is in a previous um, yes. main uh, agenda. I don't, I don't recall which one, but. Is that every year? Two hours? I, they're going to do that every year now mm -hmm. from this, from January yep. on. Yeah. So you must renew it every year. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really, if you look at the, the sessions um, that are being, provided and will we will Mary Lou will always provide you guys opportunities. There are more workshop sessions in terms of just issues and, and different things that trustees may be facing. Um, more professional development. There's some sessions that are two, so it could be one session per year that you must attend or there's you know webinars. There's a plethora of ways that you can get that certification. It's not and, one and they're thing. library specific yes. issues so that when issues come up you have the background knowledge or the legislative um, references for you know why a decision is being made or why legislation was selected. And happy to provide any background information on that if you want that. Uh, construction update. Um, we are, you know, I'll tell you, <laughs> it's like when you have a project at home, you know, it just seems to keep continue going on and on. We are almost done. Um, we we are currently using both of our spaces, our, our local history resource center and our, our tech hub, um, because they're, they're, you know, 99% complete. Um, but we are still waiting for a bifold door for our tech hub so that we can open up the doors and, and spill out. We had a program on um, the mothball, um, uh, yeah, uh, what was it? Fleet, the mothball fleet that used to run up and down the Hudson River was on. We had a program on Sunday afternoon, and um, people were outside of the door of the tech hub. So we, I was hoping we would have our bifold doors. That's the whole point: is that we can expand the room. But um, you know, our community just loves history, and there are certain topics that that people just latch on to and have fond childhood memories. So. Um, that was one that, you know, was a reason, again, why, why we want those expandable doors so that the room is available for the community for a lot of different reasons, but it's not just limited by the walls. So um, as soon as that door is in place and we have our decals put on the windows to identify where the spaces are, we'd love to have a ribbon cutting and open house and take everybody down and bring some folks in. And, um, was at the chamber breakfast this morning and, ha and had an opportunity to talk to some of our, our um, current legislators and some of our brand new legislators and want to invite them over as well so that they could see what we're doing for technology workforce development and the spaces that we're able to um, have supplemented through funding from the uh, Department of Library Development Construction Aid. Um, so that will be hopefully sometime in February, probably towards the latter part of the month. Uh, the Tech Hub, um, it, you know, really inspired um, our technology workforce development uh, initiative. And um, we were thinking about how can we supply um, folks in our community whom we see from, you know, the very beginning of how do I turn this computer on to, I really want to have an IT certificate so I can get a better job. Um, a soup to nuts program and we had some lots of discussions with people about how we can get this going. We, we do offer a lot of computer classes, but we wanted to, to um, create something that was more um, like a cohesive, progressive training session, a series of sessions and cohorts. Um, so we, we created that and we um, applied to um, the CFA grant from uh, New York State, a consolidated funding application. And we were awarded $250,000 to 
run this program. Um, so we are excited to uh, to be able to do that to start up in February, hopefully, and um, and it will run for a year, and we'll be able to have um, it's eight different cohorts, foundations to um, you know to actual boot camps, you know, with specific training and certificate programs. Um, so we uh, we have uh, we're hoping to contract with a, a local organization. Um, uh, who supplied an RFP for this, um, and uh, they are Open Hub, and they're um, <clears throat> they're able to provide the services for the um, the variety of of opportunities that we want to offer. And these are all free trainings to the community, um, and so we're we're excited about that. We will utilize a new tech hub um, to initiate that program for this this coming year. Very nice. Excited about that. Um, our town branch, uh, we closed on December 31st officially. Um, I still have to bring the keys back, which will probably be tomorrow. Um, but we, um, you know, we, we've consolidated our staff. Um, we are having visitors that used to always go to the town coming into the main. Um, and, um, you know, it's it was a little bittersweet, but we are um, you know, as I mentioned at, at the last board meeting, you know, we didn't know that opportunity was going to come to us. We didn't anticipate that it was going to end, but we're excited about what the opportunity that we would have ahead of us that we don't know about yet. Okay. So are, are we uh, tracking those numbers? Do we, are we actually tracking to see the individuals who used to use the town branch when they come in, are we able to identify these? Okay, this used to be a town branch member, so that we can get an idea of the numbers. Because mm. I mean, going down the line, you're going to have conversations around. You know, we take our library away from what's going on, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we can see that we're tracking those numbers that people are used coming down yeah. in in lieu of. We are uh, our staff. There was such a collegial kind of um, loving atmosphere over there that the the staff that used to work over there is really engaged with the people who come in that they know the families um a lot of seniors because it was easier to navigate that space um and so they're still really engaged um and um and we are we do track their numbers coming in um they know the families that are coming in um and we are also um gathering all those names because we're, we're going to be featuring a couple of uh town halls in february uh, throughout the month two of them in february uh zoom calls with um members of the community to assess not only the the um directives of our strategic plan but also when we one of those is is facility so when we look at off-site locations what what are we thinking what what um what does the community want us to do? Because we've had so many different ideas, like everybody gives me another place that's empty, you know, another vacate, vacant um, storefront. Um, I got offered a, a, a space by a coffee shop today at the chamber breakfast by one of the legislators that has a coffee shop and, and he would get, they would give it to us for free. I don't know what, what the space looks like, but, you know, to, like, to be able to set up shop in a, in a small way, um, different options like that but we, we want to gather all of that information and be able to analyze it and determine what um what we could um feasibly afford and um and go to but we want we want to hear from the community so we'll be hosting those and all of those folks that used to um go to the town branch we have a um they will be invited we have a, a service that we call it, it's called orange boy it's a marketing software and we're able to sort um, folks who used to use primarily to check out materials from the town branch exclusively so we can pull all of that information and we could we will target certain messages and invitations to them directly uh, let's see where are we safety site assessment we are having uh, one of those done on February 2nd by the Orange County Sheriff's Department um, the the officer who presented to um, this at staff development day last year last month it was last year too <laughs> um, he is going to be also um, uh, he did an active shooter training for us and then he's going to walk us through our our entire three floors and point out safety issues concerns um, you know blocked areas places where staff can go where patrons can go that that are safe so we're going to do a thorough tour of the building for that purpose and we're looking forward to that because I, that's a big issue with our staff as well and big concern that I have with 
um, people being right on the front line there and, and not knowing, you know, where do I go if God forbid something happens. So um, we're, we're educating everybody, we're giving them the tools, we're giving them the strategies and, and hopefully people will feel safer and more protected. Uh, as I mentioned, the strategic planning town halls, um, once we have those set up, um, we will share those dates and I hope that, that you and, and others that, that you share the um, information with will uh, participate. We wanted to do Zoom so that it was accessible and we could do some evenings and some mornings. Um, uh, so if you have people that you would like to participate on those, please just forward those names to me because we'll make sure they get an email about that. Uh, policy updates plan or policy manual um, needs updates. I think every policy manual does <laughs> in one way, shape or form. Um, but we are, uh, we're going to chip away at that this year. We're going to start, um, we have a, a public engagement team meeting of our staff on uh, the 23rd. We're going to do a full planning session um, to start looking at our program policies, our um, procedures, and, um, uh, you know, and, and start to chip away at, at the policies that just need updating and um, different things. You know, so much has changed over the last few years that, um, you know, our service model has has altered. And so how do we ad adequately reflect that and address some of the changes? I just also want uh, to let the board know that those out of the work that comes from the work session, those policies, because it's a, a kind of a umbrella policy will go to the policy committee as well. Mm -hmm. So I think um, Mr. Forget, I, I don't know if he went over it this time or next time was going to review as well that whatever they do, will still have to go to the policy committee as well. Oh, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. So like touch base in both places. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, just a few other highlights before um, I, I go into some of our motions. And uh, I, I hope that you have a chance to look at um, the details of the report. We have been doing so much community outreach um, that it is really exciting from the Mount St. Mary staff to Storm King School. Um, to various organizations within the community. Um, the Spanish radio show, uh, we've had presentations on um, the, the City of Newburgh Human Rights Commission. Um, we've been involved with Orange County Community College. We're doing a, um, a big effort um, collaborating with them on a workforce development event. And, um, you know, just some really exciting ways of putting the library out in front of organizations that may not have known what our, um, you know, our, our direction is and um, where we are in today's technological world. And so it's been very exciting. We had a, a fantastic Kwanzaa event here in the auditorium on um, the 28th of December. We had a, a close to 140 people and it was a fantastic celebration. It was educational, it was cultural, it was um, just a really beautiful community development, uh, you know, um, uh, experience and people came from all over. So it was very fun. Um, just been uh, wonderful for the staff to be able to participate in these um, events and activities and programs because they get to interact with the community and find out more ways that we can serve based on the needs and the interests of, of the people that um, that are in our, our service area. We learned a lot. Um, I just wanted to... And we just uh, brought on a new um, uh, librarian for the Local History Resource Center and uh, she is going to be working on the African American Civil Rights Steering Committee. Um, which is the program that, that we were part of the grant application with the city to um, create oral histories of um, so many of our, our elders in our community that we want to capture their stories and their, um, their historical experience in the city of Newburgh. And, um, so we, and we want to be the archive for those oral histories. So you could come in, find a name, you know, sit down, listen to their stories. And, um, you know, it, and we are a place where where that can um, be accessed. We, we've met uh, with Mary McTammany from uh, the city historian, had big discussion on how, because the, the, lo the um, local history um, commission and uh, um, the local historian, they are um, either part-time, very part-time or they're volunteer 
and they're not open except by appointment, whereas the library is accessible. So we are, we're looking to be that central location for, um, for people to be able to access uh, this information. I'm curious, so that's a very interesting uh, project there. So how are you reaching out or finding these individuals? Because I'm assume, I would assume that those people with that most uh, knowledge and that information that we're talking about, some to be archived, mm -hmm. would be older individuals. So yes. who have been here for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. How are we reaching out or what what tactics or the, the steering you know, that's a people. great question. And the, the steering committee is comprised of about 20, 25 people from the community uh, from our community. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody has different connections with different family members, uh, or different, or friends, or neighbors, um, people who raise them. And so we're reaching out, and um, we're, we've been doing interviews. Um, li librarians are being trained to conduct interviews through the Sound and Story Project, and we even have high school students who are are conducting interviews with the recording equipment. And um, loving the fact that I, I told one of the other, the other day, you know, you're making history by doing this because mm -hmm. now you become part of our archives. You have recorded the history of, you know, whoever the person is that they're meeting with. But we are we are we're kind of working backwards. We're looking at the folks who we really need to capture their stories sooner rather than later. And um, uh, you know, and, and so there's a there's a committee of of uh, over twenty people. What's the timeline for the committee? For the completion of, of this, uh, we are working through this coming year. Uh, you know, it's extended a little bit because we, we've had people get sick, and you know, it's kind of delayed things a bit. Um, but we have the equipment, we have the schedules, we have the interviews set up, and um, there, you know, we're kind of kicking that back in gear um, as we get back into the this new year. But it's exciting, and if we can have archives of and keep the the African American history of our city. You know, in this place where it's accessible, I, I think it'll be a beautiful addition to idea. the so the library. Just in terms of the steering committee, um, Mary, Lou, I think that it would also be important to include. I know we have city. You're, you're talking to the um, is the um, historical society. I know that there's a couple of civic um, institutions. I don't know if they've been invited. So, like, I'll double check with you. Just as a person mm -hmm. that's from the community, as African American, just hearing this now, I'm like, wow, I didn't yeah. really yeah. kind of know that. And I think that also our, our elder community. How are we incorporating the the, the local churches? Because sometimes mm -hmm. they have um, that ability to support um, your project and making sure people that maybe can't get as out as much can get to mm -hmm. tell their their local history. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, I'll definitely pass on. I'm sure, Mr. Howard. I'm sure you also have a couple of ideas. Like, like that. And, I, and I also like to say that you know I think this is an incredible idea because, as, as they like to say, you know, if you don't know your history, you're doing it repeat it. And, That's and, right. And, and, and people in this community need to know the story mm -hmm. of New Bern University mm -hmm. School District, of the town of the town Newburgh, mm -hmm. going to the city of Newburgh. They need to know those stories, and, and who better to tell it? Than the old the That's senior it. sages in our community That's who are still here yes. and still can share stories that we couldn't even fathom about our city mm -hmm. or about our community mm -hmm. and 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 they can be interesting because I know I have I have encountered some individuals and yeah. they'll tell you about stuff from the twenties yep thirties forties and I'm like wow and you just sit there in awe when you hear that absolutely it. Like, no. yeah. And that's what we actually talked about um, with Melinda Ware about mm -hmm. bringing uh, we uh, bringing this out. Um, so it's not just um, the recordings, but to actually have people come in and tell the story. We have an event that we're looking at on the twenty. Uh, is that the is that this month's count? Oh no, no, the, the twenty fourth of next month. I'll I'll share the information with everyone. But uh, we just talked about this the other day. How important it would be to hear it right from the person and we picture them sitting on its chair sort of like a throne almost and just having people sitting around listening because that that oral tradition is so lost you know we're so used to the phone and having things recorded and perfect you know yeah, on that line on that line and, and not trying to reinvent the wheel i know about a year or two ago 
I attended a meeting of the African his, his historical. That's what I'm historical. saying. That's they've already started. started this. They've one. already started. They've done this. They and, and they, they are in with this. I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, they've done this before, and they were out leashing out some of the older individuals, mm -hmm. senior individuals in our community, and, and, and exactly what you were saying, having them sit down, mm -hmm. asking them questions, and and really getting some incredible information about this area in the city, and, and so that. That may be an opportunity for you guys not to like you know start from scratch and it's, it's right what and they have you're absolutely right in that well that was a discussion early on because this was you know we we have different projects have been started off mm -hmm. and on but we want to actually complete them and compile them and store mm -hmm. them in an archive and that was where there was this uh any this um National Park Service grant is what this is, um, that's, that uh, we collaborated, the library collaborated with the city and a number of other organizations. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge grant, it's only a $50,000 grant, but it enabled us to buy the equipment and um, and to be able to train people to to actually, you yeah. know, give an oral history because it's it's a technique. Yeah. And um, yeah. so, so yeah, so I think this is an iteration of that. Right. Um, but it, it's with has some money behind it, and then hopefully some the long term plan to, to archive the stories. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, this you know people in the community are just so creative and and excited about preserving what is so important to them, and so good things are happening. So I don't want I I just have two motions um, that are are uh, one is to. Um, dispose of obsolete equipment um, we have mobile shelving in local in the old local history room uh huge shelves that were supposed to be mobile that have never worked <laughs> and they're um all those shelves have been emptied now and they're the materials are in the new local history resource center downstairs on the second floor so we would like to open that space up and be able to utilize it for other things and and get rid of those big shelves that never functioned in the first place we're good so, with that. Yeah. Nice. Good. Send that to um, the board. Okay. Thank you. And then the other uh, motion was to accept these funds. Um, we, you know, the New York State Department of Library Development um, is where we can, uh, uh, libraries can apply for funding for um, renovation or new construction. Um, you know, we have a lot of buildings like ours, which is almost historic. If it's 50 years old, it's historic. So we're getting there. Um, but that are, you know, uh, that were falling apart. And so the state years ago, 15 years ago, came up with a plan to how do we address this for libraries because they are public spaces and they need to be, you know, functional. So we applied and received um, the funding to create the two new spaces that are on the second floor. And what the grant does is it, it um, you have the potential of getting 50% back. Um, but uh, the funding isn't as great, wasn't as great this year, so we're getting 32% back. Um, but we did get a, a check the other day, which I just love six-figure checks, um, for $262,195. And I'd like, and that will replenish, um, it, it, you know, it's a reimbursement basically for expenses that we have put out from um, library funds. So I right, uh, we'll go to the board for accepting. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, good. Good on those. Two. That was we we had the friends first, so that was the next thing on my agenda, and I just uh, our next meeting is February 9th. So right. just to point of information. Yeah. So when the when the ladies were talking earlier from the library, yeah. so I don't know if everybody here is familiar, but you know, on the other side of the parking lot, that used to be a library. Yes. Uh huh. And a lot of people don't know that. Oh yeah, that, it's that beautiful. Was to yeah. Green Street, that building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was a little kid, that, that's, that's where you went. And, and the, spiral the spiral staircases. That's what Absolutely. people remember in yeah. all the little uh, balconies. Absolutely. And yeah, that was very that was exciting. Beautiful, beautiful space. Yeah. Beautiful space. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a lot of people yeah. have those. You know, they remember yeah, yeah, that space and Absolutely. make new ones in the new space. Yep. Yeah. We're excited. So there was an emergency with the um, NECSD representative. So she will present at the at the next uh, committee. Okay. And and just to follow up, as I, one thing I did want to mention to to Kelly was um, she had asked about Library Advocacy Day, and it is scheduled um, for February. What is that number? Twenty eighth. 28th uh, up in Albany. And so we will connect. Um, I, I've sent this to her to have a dialogue, but we usually have a bus going up with the kids from 
uh, whatever, you know, department. I mean, sometimes it's a leadership group, sometimes it's right. a, a, you know, legislative kind of uh, focus, but um, the kids were fantastic the year um, before COVID and we had such a wonderful time. So I don't have information about the busing. I'm waiting for that because usually we have buses that meet at the Newburgh mall and we mm -hmm. take the kids up. Um, but we're hoping to do that. We will do that again this year. And I think that you guys will see they do have a lot going on. I actually reviewed her presentation with her. So I'm like, I can't, I can't wait for you, for the committee to hear Good. all the wonderful things the library and media specials are, are doing throughout to incorporate um, literacy and to really um, engage in all different type of learning activities with our with our students. So. Um, I just can't wait for her to show you and they're they're also a champion of some of the digital um, the digital uh, citizenship work so they're really really um, doing a lot of great things so I can't wait for them to be able to speak for her to speak to some of that work awesome. look forward to hearing it great well that was all I had thank you very much thank you Mr. Howard thank you very much. <laughs> all right thank you everybody thank you. I haven't been one of these in a minute Next. <laughs> I, know, we I might start too. coming back. <laughs> <laughs>